Hey guys, assalamualaikum. Welcome back to another virtual lecture. In today's video, we're going to learn about money and banking. Now, before we begin, let's talk about money. What do you understand about money? Money is basically anything that is accepted as a medium of exchange. Now, before money existed, the alternative to using money is the barter system, where people exchange goods and services for other goods and services directly. However, the biggest problem of barter is the need to have a double coincidence of wants for a trade to take place. It is also rather unsophisticated and troublesome for a person to be carrying around bulky items that may be difficult to exchange fairly in order to get traded. For example, if you want to eat roti canai and teh tarik for breakfast, under a barter system, you'll have to find others who have exactly those items and are willing to trade them with something that you have. Now let's move on to the three basic functions of money. First of all, money as a medium of exchange. Secondly, money as a unit of value. And thirdly, money as a store of value. Let's look at these functions one by one. As mentioned to you before, money is essentially used as a medium of exchange that is widely accepted in buying goods and services. Now, as we've already know, the problems with barter made it necessary for us to use money in order to exchange one good for another. So now let's look at what does it mean by money as a unit of value? Money is a unit of value, or sometimes known as unit of account, in that it offers a consistent way of measuring the value of things and consequently providing the terms to quote prices and record debts. This allows different goods and services to be compared against each other. People often use money as a yardstick to measure the relative worth of a variety of different goods and services as well as economic transactions. For example, if the price of a movie ticket at a standard cinema hall is 10 ringgit and the price of admissions to Museum Negara is 2 ringgit, you know immediately that seeing one movie would cost you five visits to the National Museum. Moving on to the third function of money, which is as a store of value. What does that mean? Money also serves as a store of value in the sense that it can hold its value over time. This enables the transfer of purchasing power from one time period to another. For example, if Ali has 100 ringgit today, he can hold the money and spend it tomorrow, next month, or even next year. However, the main disadvantage of money as a store of value is that the value of money falls when the price of goods and services rises. So, if the price of one plate of nasi lemak increases from one ringgit to two ringgit, Ali can only buy 50 plates of nasi lemak now instead of 100 plates when the price was one ringgit. In such cases, it may be better to use other assets like houses, land, or other properties as a means of storing value and wealth. Nonetheless, money is still regarded as having more advantages over other assets since money is more liquid, easily portable, more divisible, and comes in convenient denominations. Now, in the money market, what's important is the supply of money and the demand for money. We will look at the supply of money first. Now, what is the supply of money? Supply of money refers to the total amount of money available in the economy at any given time. There are several ways to measure the supply of money. In Malaysia, the narrowest category of money is called M1. And there's also M2 and sometimes M3. As mentioned, M1 is the narrowest category of money. Okay, so M1 consists of currency in circulation. That means these are the banknotes and coins issued by the central bank in Malaysia that are in the hands of the public. Currency is widely used as a medium of exchange as they are highly liquid. Now, besides currency, we also have checks, okay, also known as current accounts. Now, these checks are also used in paying bills or buying large amounts of items as they're almost as convenient as currency. Checks or current accounts are basically balances in bank accounts at commercial banks as well as Islamic banks that depositors can access on demand by writing checks. Therefore, sometimes checkable deposits or current accounts are also known as demand deposits. 
A broader category of money is called M2. Now, M2 consists of M1, which are these items previously mentioned, and things called near monies. Now, once we start to consider balances in bank accounts as part of money supply, we can expand the scope and consider other accounts that people hold at banks and other financial institutions. These balances in other accounts are non-cash assets that are highly liquid and easily converted to cash. Hence, that is why they're called near monies, or narrow quasi-money, or cash equivalents. Examples of near monies are savings accounts, fixed deposits, negotiable instruments of deposits, repurchase agreements, foreign currency deposits, as well as marketable securities. And finally, the broadest measure of money supply is M3, which includes everything in M2 and deposits placed with other banking institutions. So guys, after knowing about all of the functions of money, which are as a medium of exchange, as a unit of value or account, and as a store of value, are credit cards money? The answer is relatively simple. Credit cards do not fall under any of the categories of money. It's not M1 because credit cards are not currencies and they're also not checkable deposits. Credit cards also aren't M2 because they do not qualify as these near monies. And credit cards are also not M3. Therefore, credit cards aren't money, although it is a means of postponing payment for a short period of time. So here's a summary of what we've learned so far. The topic is money and banking. So naturally, we'll be learning about money as well as banking. Now for money, you've already learned about the definition of money, right? Which is basically anything that is deemed as a medium of exchange. You've also been introduced to the three basic functions of money, which are medium of exchange, unit of value, and store of value. Then we've looked at the supply of money, or how to measure the money supply. Now, one of the popular theories of money is the quantity theory of money, which says that if the amount of money in an economy doubles, price levels will also double. Now, this means that the consumer will pay twice as much for the same amount of goods and services, which is related to the concept of inflation measured by the changes in CPI. As for banking, there are several classification and categories of banks. In Malaysia in particular, we have the central bank, which is the Bank Negara Malaysia, and other commercial banks, including the Islamic banks.